Hello everyone. Welcome to Tuesday edition of Take 5, where we've been doing two a week now, Tuesday and Thursday, we're trying to have a, a theme at least for the week, and sometimes I'm hoping even longer. Here's our theme for this week of the two Take 5s, um, your body. Um, we're going to call this the shape of you. Uh, the weather is getting a little bit better, and we're thinking about maybe going outside more, going to the beach perhaps in June, July. We're worried about our bodies, right? So let's talk about the shape of you, not just for the summer, but maybe for all time. Um, there's a real connection between our physical health and our spiritual health. And the scriptures often refer to that. We're actually going to look at that. Today we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 9 and then Thursday, 1 Timothy 4. But there is a connection between those two. Um, the Bible doesn't say a whole lot about specific how to exercise. Uh, it almost assumes that you do. Part of it, I think, is the culture in which it was written. Um, and yet, in our day and age, where we can be so sedentary and machines can do so much of the work for us, it's easy to get out of shape. And so we're going to talk a little bit about the shape of you, about being in shape, and what does that look like, and how does it affect spiritually. You know, I, as I think about it, I think of a, several areas, um, and then we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 9, but several areas of physical fitness, of getting in shape. Um, it has to be diet, right? It has to be sleep, right? Um, and then it has to be exercise, a, a regimen, a discipline of that. And now, for sure, let's say this right off the bat, the whole subject of physical fitness can be um, negative on a couple of lines. On the one line, it can become um, almost a, a source of pride or a source of idolatry. We all know people like that. And you can tell from maybe my body that it's not my case. <laughs> um, although I do try to work out often and I try to be careful. So it can be a source of pride or a source of idolatry. Um, physical fitness can also be a source of shame and a source of guilt. And uh, when we live in such a, a body conscious world and society, um, people who are out of shape or who don't feel good about themselves or about their body can have a real sense of shame. That's, that's not good either. Uh, but there does have to be a balance. And so we're gonna talk about the shape of you uh, in these couple of weeks, grateful for our bodies and see what the scriptures say about um, about them and about our responsibility for them. First Corinthians chapter 9, we're going to just quickly look at verses 24 through 27. And the context of this whole passage basically is, is giving up your rights in, in a day when no one wants to do that, giving up your rights for the benefit of others. The Apostle Paul uses himself as an apostle, as an example of that. Read all of 1 Corinthians 9 and you'll see that. But then he uses it in a spiritual realm. And the example is, even in our bodies, that we give up our rights, we make our bodies a slave so that it will be accomplishing a greater purpose. Let's just read these verses. He says, don't you know that runners in a stadium all race, but only one receives the prize? Verse 24. So then he says, run in such a way to win a prize. In other words, whatever you do, spiritually, professionally, physically, do, do your best. We have a core value here at Trinity of excellence. And um, it's we, we won't always be excellent, but we want the bar to be high to say we're doing our best. Now, everyone who competes, exercises self-control in everything. He's talking about runners, races. Um, it's the whole idea of self-discipline. And if you're going to get in physical shape, if you're going to talk about the shape of you, there needs to be some self-discipline. You exercise self-control. And so for me on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and sometimes Saturday, I'm at the gym. That's self-control. I don't always want to be there, but I do it. They don't they do it to receive a perishable crown. Again, the physical athletes are working hard to get a gold medal. Spiritually, we work hard. We f remain faithful. We persevere, he says, for an imperishable crown. So I do not run like one who runs aimlessly or box like one beating the air not aimlessly. So there's a purpose in working out. You'll feel better. You'll feel healthier. You'll live longer maybe, but there's a purpose for all of this. Not an idolatry purpose or a pride purpose, but a physical fitness purpose, a mental health purpose. I don't do it aimlessly. 
And then he says, instead, I discipline my body and bring it under strict control so that after preaching to others, I myself might not be disqualified. And now I think he's talking about the, the other areas of our body, even the sexual areas or the moral areas. I keep those under control because if all of a sudden I'm engaged in immorality, I've completely disqualified myself in the spiritual realm. So all, all we're saying right now, a couple of key words. Physical fitness is important and it includes discipline. Got to do it. And you, if you're disciplined, you'll do it. But also purpose. Why are you doing it? What is the purpose of it? Think of those two things. of Asking God for the discipline, for the will to continue to exercise, to eat right, to sleep right, to work out, but also not aimlessly, but have a purpose. Um, maybe it's to see your grandkids when you're still older. You know, I don't know. Um, but the purpose, sometimes it's to put the Put the bathing suit on when you get to Myrtle Beach in July. I don't know. But the purpose should be there too. Discipline and purpose. Spiritual things are very, very important. But physical things are as well. I'm done. We'll continue The Shape of You uh, Thursday. See you.